What up, y'all? We back another video, and this time we're gonna be talking about the Professional Basketball League in Germany. And we're gonna give a quick rundown on the level of competition, who best fits in this league. We're gonna talk about salaries, lifestyle. I even got a tip for y'all. And then I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the games that I've seen since I've been here over the last four days or so watching the uh, German Cup. So let's jump into it. As a domestic league, Germany isn't one of the best leagues in Europe, but it is, I would say, on the upper echelon. So by that, I mean it's probably the sixth best league, sixth best domestic league, I think, in Europe. And you know, when you think about leagues like Spain, Turkey, Russia, Italy, France, possibly even Israel, um, even though Israel's having a down year this year because of the war, I think, you know, Germany is probably towards the bottom half of that group, probably in that next tier of, uh, uh, of leagues, domestic leagues, because of the level of talent. Um, I think there are some, obviously, a couple EuroLeague teams that are good, and then you have Ohm and some other teams that have been playing well, let's say, like in Euro Cup and whatnot. But I think the league as a whole, and they do have a, a large number of teams, um, I think it, it the, the level of competition really you know drops off after that. That being said, it's still very good league, especially if you're a young player and even for some veterans, depending on your situation, it is a good league to to play in. I think that this league fits a specific type of player, and I think that in order to to play in this league and have success you need to kind of analyze your game and see is this league better than let's say going to a france or going to a israel so on and so forth in regards to progressing up the ladder because in europe it is very much a ladder when you're trying to get to the bigger teams and bigger budgets and you know salaries and uh, lifestyle and things of that nature. So in my opinion, in finding a player that best fits in this league or looking for your own success in this league, you have to look at where this league is the weakest. And I think the weak points in this league is they have slow bigs and I, I don't think they have a lot of athleticism at the guard spot. So in that sense, if you are an athletic guard, I think you will have tremendous su success in this league. Um, as I've been watching games and I even played, uh, well, <laughs> I spent probably about like six weeks with the team here in Germany. Um, you know, I got a feel for the style of play here and that was one of the things that, you know, myself and then I also had a, a friend that played many years in France and he played some years in Germany and we kind of both said the same thing. Um, and that was that in Germany, this is an exaggeration, but you can almost walk to the paint if you have any kind of athleticism. There's just not a lot of athletic defenders on the court. There's not a lot of length on the court. So if you do have a good first step or, you know, you're, you're a speed demon, you're going to be able to get paint touches. And, you know, maybe you are matched up against an American that has or another foreigner that has good athleticism. But chances are you're also going to come down and catch the switch against, you know, some local players or some other players that just don't have the uh, same athletic ability as you'll see in, in other leagues. So I think if you are a quick guard, especially with the way the game is played now and there's so much switching going on, uh, you're going to have a field day. I mean, even guards that aren't that quick have the ability to to get in the paint and, and to beat these uh, these switches, which I don't think happens as much in other leagues. But here, I think you, you have a wealth of uh, slow footed bigs. And I think that is a uh, I think that's an advantage for quicker guards. Another position that I think is extremely successful here would be if you are a dynamic wing. Chances are, if you're a dynamic wing, you're probably not playing in this league. You're probably at a at a higher league. But if you look at a player like let's say like a Derek Austin, who is he can handle the ball. He's six nine. He can shoot it. He can drive it. He can score in a lot of ways. I mean, he's dominating this league. And I think that. He's the type of player that could possibly dominate in other leagues as well, even though he'd have to be a lot more efficient in a different league. But I think when you have size and the ability to handle, shoot, and you know do a lot of different things, I think you can have success in this league because, again, I don't think that this league particularly has great athletes, and I don't think they particularly have great length either. So I think if you're a dynamic wing, chances are you're probably not in this league, but if you have a chance to go to this league, I think you have a great chance of success. And last but not least, I would also say that the bigs, if you are a mobile big with strength, I think you can have success in this league, but you have to have some strength. These bigs, 
in Germany are tall, they're strong, and they're physical. But as I said before, they are a bit slow footed. So I remember when I played in Germany, there was a uh, there was a player that he was he was also he was in the second division, and uh, we ended up playing him in the preseason. But he was very tall and athletic. And he just got dunk after dunk after dunk because he knew how to scream, he knew how to roll, he was a live threat. And that's just something that you don't typically have a lot of here. You know, I've seen some mobile bigs here because guys are switching a little more, but you don't quite see the uh, the strength or you don't quite see like the the, the verticality or the, uh, the vertical athleticism. So, you know, I, I think if you're a big that has some strength and you can um, and you can get behind the defense and, you know, play out of the dunker spot or rim run, rim run, rim run and things of that nature, I think you definitely have a, a lot of success here. But moving forward, let's talk about the money. So salaries in Germany, Germany is not known for having, you know, big budgets here. And I think it could be for a number of different reasons. I know taxes in general are high here in Germany. Um, depending on your situation, whether you're a local player or a foreign player, your tax situation is going to be a little bit different. Uh, teams usually pay your taxes, but I know in Germany you have the uh, you have the opportunity to uh, get some of that tax money back, which is a bonus, and that's another reason. Like a lot of guys like to play in Germany, but uh, across the board, the range of salaries is is very broad. Like obviously the Euroleague teams, like yes, you have your opportunities to you know touch a million dollars and things like that, but. Not everybody's getting that money and then it, it falls off, you know, drastically as you start to go to uh, other teams within Germany. Um, over the course of my career, when I signed in Germany, I signed for 120,000. I was playing with uh, with Ludwigsburg um, at the beginning of the season. And, um, you know, over the course of my career, you know, I've gotten offers in Germany for 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, um, you know, so I think that outside of like the Euro League teams and you know and obviously some of the Euro Cup teams you'll have guys making maybe between like a hundred and two hundred thousand but outside of that I don't think there are uh, let's say a lot of guys making past a hundred thousand dollars I know a lot of foreigners that are actually in that 60 70 80 range um, in regards to salary which isn't bad money but you know it's just not comparable to what you can make in some of the better leagues. So, you know, the salaries, there is a discrepancy there. Um, and it's known as being like one of those lower budget leagues, but Germany is a league that has a level of freedom and, you know, you can play yourself into bigger salaries. A lot of guys, I look at Germany as the springboard league. I've seen a lot of guys do it over the course of my career and, and, and even more recently. So um, I, I, I say that to say, Sometimes analyzing the type of player you are, it may make sense to take the lower salary in Germany so you could springboard into a bigger league with bigger, with bigger salaries. Now for my favorite part, the lifestyle. Lifestyle in Germany definitely varies depending on where you live, as it does anywhere. Obviously, if you're playing in a big city like a Berlin, like a Munich, you're gonna have a lot more fun than if you're playing in some smaller city like I was in Ludwigsburg. Um, wasn't a whole lot to do there. But I think, you know, one of the things that or some of the things that I look for when uh, when choosing a, a basketball city or a city to play in is you obviously want to look for good food, nightlife, um, I guess women if you're into that. And then, you know, just also just the culture and everything else around it. I think um, Berlin and, and Munich, some of these bigger cities in Germany, you know, they have a level of uh, diversity in regards to the food that you can get. You know, even uh, there are some, you know, diverse pockets of people as well. Um, the nightlife is cool. You know, I personally like hip hop and I feel like Germany does have a hip hop culture, which is something that I enjoy. So, you know, you're able to go to a restaurant or a nightclub and hear hip hop music. And you're also able to go shopping and, and buy some more urban style clothing, um, you know. And I think also, you know, around basketball, you have magazines like Big Magazine. You have Kicks with a, with a Z. Um, you know, they're selling basketball shoes and things of that nature. And it's a little thing, but I mean, I used to order my shoes when I was in Europe. I used to order my shoes off of Kicks whether I was playing in France or wherever else. So, you know, it's good to have, you know, these all these other local markets around, um, you know, easily accessible in the country that you're living in. 
and uh, I think that's what makes you know the lifestyle in Germany not so bad if you can get over the cold because it does get very cold it does get very dreary especially during the winter time which is basketball season and uh, that part does kind of suck I don't I do not like the, the weather in Germany but uh, but yeah it's a decent city you can find decent food anywhere obviously you may have to pay a little more for for better food depending on your taste buds but um, it's out there so for the tips so my tip to players if you are coming to Germany and let's say you're leaving America and you want to get to the NBA or you want to get on a summer league team these are usually for like younger players if I had one tip for you guys, I would say it would be best for you to try to get to Um. Radio Farm Um is a team that is somewhat of a development team. So they typically have a bunch of young players that uh, that they like to showcase. And, you know, these young players, you know, tend to go off and into the NBA, kind of like a Killian Hayes and, you know, a number of other players like in the past. But because of that, I think that makes Ulm a good spot if you're trying to stay in the eyes of the NBA. There are a number of NBA scouts that come to watch practices and games throughout the entire year because Ulm always has prospects. So obviously if you're trying to get seen more so by NBA personnel on a consistent basis, it will make sense to play in Ulm because when you're playing overseas and typically you're playing once or twice a week, sometimes you have your best games in practice, you know? so. If you if you are able to constantly be in front of that NBA eye and now you have chances to have better games in front of these eyes more consistently, I think you open up your uh, your world of opportunities stateside um, by playing on a team like this. So that would be my one tip for anybody that's looking to come play in Germany. If you can get to Ohm, sign that contract, get out there, play and play well, because I think it will uh, open up some opportunities for you back in the States. And last but not least, my thoughts on uh, Germany since I've been here. I landed in uh, Berlin some days ago, actually on Valentine's Day. My Valentine is back in Miami. And uh, so I landed in Berlin and uh, I rented a car and I was going to drive out to Rostock. I wanted to go see the Rostock game, which is about two hours, I think, north of Berlin. Um, and the trip itself was a nightmare. Uh, because I rented an electric car and the battery kept dying so I had to keep charging charging and charging and uh, I spent $400 on one day of renting a car just because I was charging so much so that wasn't fun but the game itself was a uh, it was a competitive game uh, Rostock was playing Vegeta and I think that you really get to see the level of talent like drop off when you get used to watching, let's say like an Alba or a Bayern Munich, you start to see, not to say in all due respect, not to say that those players aren't talented, there's definitely talent on the floor, but I just think as a whole, the uh, competitive level of those teams were, uh, were a far cry from the, uh, the, the top teams in the league. But uh, Rostock ended up losing that game, but uh, there was a lot of talent, as I mentioned, Derek Alston uh, earlier. And uh, yeah, so it was good to kind of get a feel for, you know, some of the teams, some of the more average teams in the league. Um, and, and again, drove back to uh, Berlin. And then the next day I took a train out to, to Munich. Got to Munich, went to the German Cup, you know, watched some of those games. That's been great. Um, got to sit down with some, with some staff members of Bayern Munich and, you know, meet a bunch of people uh, within the German basketball world. Uh, Dennis Schroeder was in the building and he had a workout. Uh, earlier this morning, um, so I was able to get some footage of that. And yeah, the the Alba Ohm game was probably the best game because the Bayern Bamberg game was a blowout. The Ohm uh, the Ohm Alba game was was interesting. And in the championship game, Bayern Munich played against Ohm. I was looking forward to that game. I thought it was going to be a very competitive game, and it was. I expected Bayern to win. Um, they just have a better team. They're just more complete and. That's exactly what happened, but hats off to Ohm. I mean, they played extremely hard. Uh, they just didn't have enough talent. Congrats to Bayern for winning the championship. Uh, Well-deserved. They're clearly the best team in Germany right now. And uh, let's see how they uh, finish out the season. But I appreciate you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I got a lot more content coming for you.